You are now listening to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Hello, this is James, and welcome back to the Perceptive Readers. Today I have a little something special for you. It's actually a story, a brand new story. You know, from time to time I may express or tell different um, stories that really I've told not one, but maybe five or ten times or okay, one million times. All right. Yes, I know. I've told them that many times where it's like they just flow out of my mind and then and just on to the paper or just when I'm talking with people. But today on this perceptive readers, it's a brand new story. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm just uh, thinking about it now. I've actually thought about this story about a couple of weeks ago, and it actually built itself up over the course of maybe some months. And so now I'm just putting everything together, Uh, everything that I'm talking to you about right now or will share in this nice account in the next segment is not written down. I just have a few notes in an outline, so to speak. And, uh, and when I look at the notes, it's not that many at all. So as I continue to share, uh, this story, it's like it's going to be developed as I'm talking to you. Again, don't get me wrong. I know exactly what the main points are that will be brought out in the story. But exactly how I'm going to uh, tell it, I still haven't quite decided that. And so you may say, well, what do you mean? How are you going to tell it? Well, have you heard different types of uh, readers? I'm sure you have. And some can be very, very um expressive. Uh, they can make sounds and noises with their mouths and all sorts of other talents that they have. Well, even though I would like to do that, I don't think I'm going there. <laughs> Not this time. And remember Lee Allen, who read one of my uh, product of culture books where he read the, the trilogy anyway. Uh, he was very good at, um, being a voice actor. That's what they call it. So even though he's a narrator, uh, he's able to also, um, uh, put the right touch with the voice. Uh, he can sound like a very manly man <laughs> and he can sound like a, a very a soft spoken lady or little girl. And so I won't be going there either. <laughs> uh, either way though, Keep this in mind before we do uh, move on to the story uh, that's in the outline. Uh, I'm going to have me a cup of coffee. I have it right now, um, by the way. So, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. And um, uh, keep this other thought in mind about knowledge, how knowledge really does help you when it's uh, what you need. And so really think about it. I had mentioned uh, for you to really th- uh, go through the perceptive readers uh, that was before this one. And that was 4C. Yes, that was perceptive readers 4C on what you do with knowledge. Either way, I've talked enough now. And so we're going to go into this story And uh, what is the name of the story? See, that just popped up in my mind just now about this story. All the story will be called What Friends Do for One Another. Interesting name for a story, isn't it? But remember, this story also has a purpose. Keep in mind how knowledge When it's what you need, it empowers you. Welcome. Come in and have a seat. Would you like a cup of coffee? No? Well, I'm going to pour myself one. 
and just sit back and relax. Uh, you're a little old. They say that uh, the children, the ones from 16 to 18, would be here. Uh, you look like you're a little bit older than that. Oh, you're actually 16 to 18 at heart. I will be your narrator today. Let us begin. Let me take a sip of coffee first. So you have to keep that palate moist, as they say. Well, you know, there were once two women, good friends. One was named Olivia and the other one was named Lisa. All names in this event or this story are just good names that the narrator wanted to uh, make up and share with you because they just strike his heart chords in a certain way. This is in no way referencing real life events. Uh, if they happen to cross over to some, it's just a mere coincidence. So again, let's get back to talking about Olivia and Lisa. They were the best of friends for years. And when they had children, really, they each had a girl. It was almost like osmosis or it was passed on through DNA that same love that Olivia and Lisa had it was passed on to their daughters now what are their daughters names well listen to this one daughter who was begotten by Olivia was named Honor isn't that such a wonderful name and then Lisa named her daughter Gracie. And Honor and Gracie just went together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they went together like, no, I was going to use example like mayonnaise and, and bread, but some people don't like mayonnaise and bread. Well, anyway, this is my story. Just keep following along. Back to Honor and Gracie. These are the ones who we will be following through this account, this short little story. When Honor and Gracie were in kindergarten, they had a teacher named Miss Timberlake. Now, Miss Timberlake was a very, very nice lady, nice woman. Uh, she loved her job. She loved the children. And she was always thinking of creative things to do to keep them interested and preoccupied. So, she paid attention to each child and really tried to single out any project that she would create for each child. Yet, she experienced something different with Honor and Gracie. Now, what was that? Well, as I already told you, she could work with each child normally individually and cater whatever the art project they were doing to make it come out the way that that child wanted it to as far as expressing their personality. Yet, all even in kindergarten, expressing herself or helping Honor and Gracie to express themselves individually, it just didn't happen always. For example, the project may be, why don't you take your nice colored mats? Because they had these mats that, you know, in kindergarten, children normally have to sleep after lunch. And so they have these little mats or break even. They have these little mats from uh, blue, green, any type of color that even match with their personality. Well, what color mat do you think Honor and Gracie had? Well, they both had blue mats. And sometimes Miss Timberlake would say, oh, is blue your favorite color, um, Honor? 
and Honor was said what she said. <laughs> so, so as you can see, uh, they really just meld together and they had a lot of interests in common. And so what Miss Timberlake decided to do was, well, every time I try to get one to express themselves uh, or to do this or that project, uh, they just tend to just work together. They just go together. Even when it's time to take break uh, after lunch, they would even put their mats together and create like a little tent or a house and, and put their blanket over it. And they both would sleep in their nice cornered off section uh, in the classroom. So Miss Timberlake said, hmm. I'm not going to break that up. They work well together. How did this help? Because there were times when other children would have difficulties. And when Miss Timberlake had to really give some type of special attention to that child, there were two persons she knew she wouldn't have to worry about. Can you guess who they are? Yes. It was Honor and Gracie. They took care of one another. And one thing that Miss Timberlake always noticed, though, was that it seemed like, no, it most certainly was. Gracie kind of took the lead in speaking quite a bit. And Honor was actually just quite all right with that. But again... Miss Timberlake appreciated their friendship. She appreciated how they worked together. So what did Miss Timberlake do when it was time to move on from kindergarten? She wrote a note. Now, this note was to help the next teacher of her class when they moved to elementary school. It is not something that she had to do. It was something she wanted to do to tell the teacher of the wonderful help and the camaraderie that Honor and Gracie had among themselves to make them in the next class, first grade that is, to be able to work with them and to bring out the best in them and see what they could do with this friendship between the two of them, okay? So on graduation day of kindergarten, it was such a happy occasion for all involved, the families of Honor and Gracie and the parents. It was just a happy day. Well, on that day, normally the parents are still able to uh, either get the report cards in the mail or after the uh, events, the ceremonial events, they can get the report cards just straight from the teacher. And you say, what? Report cards in kindergarten? Yes, the check mark report cards. Those are the type of cards where uh, there's a list of things and it really actually just deals more with being able to obey or obedience. Like things like, uh, did the person, uh, do the person, yes, do they listen? Uh, uh, do they obey? Uh, are they helpful? Are they friendly? Things like that are all on the report card. Can you guess what type of check marks Honor and Gracie received? Oh, they all received basically nearly the same check marks on everything except but one. Now, when Honor, Gracie, and Olivia and Lisa were together, uh, they were having ice cream to celebrate it after the event. The parents were looking over the report cards and they notice, huh, they have check marks all in the same box, except but for Gracie, 
she doesn't have the check mark of she always does what she's told, but Honor does. And that is one thing that Lisa brought out to Olivia. I wonder why did that happen? I mean, it must be a mistake somehow. And Olivia would just say, uh-huh. And so then <laughs> Lisa went and asked her daughter, Gracie, Lisa. Uh, let me make sure I, I got the correct name. Lisa went and asked her daughter, Gracie, why did you not get a checkbox in this box? And Gracie said, huh, mom? Then Lisa said, well, Honor got the check mark as far as she always does what she's told. But you didn't get one. Why is that? And then Gracie said, I don't know. I don't know what that has to do with anything. And Lisa said, oh, mm-hmm. And then Olivia said, oh, mm-hmm. But anyway, continuing on. When they were later by themselves, Lisa and Olivia, they were talking about that check mark or that check mark that was missing on a report card that Miss Timberlake must have made a mistake on. And Lisa just had to keep talking about it. Now, I, I know Gracie listens. She does what she's told. And then Olivia said, uh-huh. And Lisa just went on and on and was just saying, I don't get, I need to find out more about this. And so they later called Gracie in the room again and said, Gracie, are you sure that Miss Timberlake didn't make a mistake? Why would she leave this check mark or this box not checked? And Gracie said, I don't know. What does it have to do with anything anyway? Oh, and Lisa said, oh, she was a little bit frustrated and she looked at Olivia and Olivia said, uh huh. So they sent away Lisa. I mean, Lisa sent away her daughter, Gracie, and just turned to Olivia and said, boy, it just seems like sometimes that girl just got a little sassiness in her. I don't know where she gets that sassiness from. And Olivia just said, uh-huh. And then Lisa looked at Olivia and said, what does the uh-huh mean? You've just been saying uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What does that mean? And Olivia said, yeah. Lisa said, what do you mean? Oh, 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 I mean nothing, Olivia said. <laughs> no, nothing at all. No, I just, uh, just agreeing with you. And then Lisa said, no, you're going to tell me. Uh, where do you think she get that sassiness from? I, she certainly didn't get it from me. And Olivia just looked at her. And so it goes. Now let's move on to elementary school. Now, something interesting happened in elementary school. When Mr. Simmons received a note from Miss Timberlake on the daughters of Olivia and Lisa, he really appreciated that note. What was going through his mind? Where well, Mr. Timberlake was one of those type of, just a basic man, in other words, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. So when he knew that they had a camaraderie together, that Honor and Gracie, and that they could work together, in his mind, he was like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to just give the lesson. They're going to teach themselves. <laughs> and that's the way he did it. And that way he could focus on uh, maybe on the more difficult cases that he had. Now, yes, I use the term cases, but it just meant that in elementary school, already there were some children that were not having the, uh, I guess you would say, the home life that they wish and deserve to have. Good. I, at least I have honor and Gracie. They can take care of themselves. I think I'll even make them 
the teacher's pet so that they can pass out papers for me and I don't have to worry about anything. So he wrote a note back to Miss Timberlake and said, thank you so much for giving me my teacher's aids uh, for that I'm going to use because in elementary school, teachers actually had the option of keeping their aids with them through the whole time that they were with them. So if elementary school was one or two or even three years, they could still, because there were teachers who had the skills, actually keep them for that long to be their aides. And so what a wonderful thing. It doesn't mean that the children got off easy because no, the aides, they worked so hard in helping the teacher, it actually gave them extra points, extra credits uh, towards their grades. And that was a wonderful thing. And it actually made their parents, Olivia and Lisa, very proud of their children. So with that in mind, in elementary school, things were going along very smoothly for Honor and Gracie. Their friendship, which was already strong, just grew and the love just blossomed. And it was evident to all. I mean, when it came to spelling, oh, you better believe Honor could just spell anything. I believe today there may be some words in the dictionary that she actually created. (laughs) Well, in this world that we're talking about, and Gracie just had a proficiency and uh, efficiency for math on a level that was sheer on just on a genius level. So, again, when Honor had difficult uh, a difficult time with the math lesson, she always had Gracie to help her out. And see, Mister Timberlake, he knew this, and so. It did not bother him at all that they never raised their hands to ask for any help with their math problems or when it came to English and spelling. It was never any problem because Gracie actually had honor to help her with that. And so it just was a nice workable arrangement that they had. No. It was more than a nice work. It was on a level of excellence that teachers hope for in their students. So the next five years, really, in elementary school just flew by. It was a happy, happy time for Honor and Gracie. And you can be assured that Mr. Timberlake, I mean, excuse me, and Mr. Simmons was very appreciative of the note that he had gotten years before from Miss Timberlake. And he could never thank her enough for letting them, letting him know about the gift that he had in Honor and Gracie. And not only were Honor and Gracie good about helping themselves, but as each grade from second, third, fourth and fifth they continue to help other classmates more and more than not just passing out papers but they actually did a little small form of tutoring so it continued to actually help Mr. Uh, Simmons to help his class more on a, a, a higher level if we can use that term, to prepare them for what? The next school after this. Middle school. Now, in middle school, it just went along the same lines. What Mr. Simmons did was he wrote a nice two to three page letter to Mr. McGriffin. And he told Mr. McGriffin, you do have some students coming to your school and you would be doing yourself a great favor if you keep them together. So Mr. McGriffin, who was the principal of the school, 
he knew he knew the way Mr. Simmons thought, you see. And so he said, now he wouldn't send me this if they certainly didn't live up to what he was saying about them. So he made sure in the computer systems that he told his staff, these are the ones that we're going to keep together. They were teacher's aides and we just got notes that yes, they should be kept together. So we're going to keep them together. Now, what teacher would like to have them in their, you know, in their classroom for grade six? And so another teacher, uh, uh, you know, readily it's, uh, held up her hand when they had a meeting and said, hey, I will take them. I'm going to need some help my first year uh, teaching. And so Mr. McGriffin said, there you go. So now. In grade six, it continued. They helped the grade six teacher. Then in seventh grade, even though they had the same homeroom, they ended up working together in all the other classes too, because this was set up by arrangement in the school system. Very wonderful arrangement and it worked. Honor continued to just grow in smarts and, and winning spelling bees left and right. And then you still had Gracie, who she was studying all the mysteries of the universe, how everything adds up and sometimes don't add up. And she will let the teacher know about it, you see. Well, they got along great. But, you know, something happened in eighth grade. In eighth grade, remember, Gracie was very interested in math. And it was starting to get into the, even the area of astronomy and the universe. She was so enthralled with it that the spelling tests and the other aspects of literature just wasn't her cup of tea. So when it came during test time, remember, they were the ones who actually passed out the test. So Gracie one day told Honor, Honor, you know, I struggle with these English tests and, and this literature. Can you just go ahead and take mine for me? And Honor said, no, you should do it yourself. You should do it. You'll get better. And you're not bad at it anyway. And then Grace was saying, well, I'm not like you. And Honor said, well, I'm not like you either in math. I, you know, I struggle with that. I only make C's in it. And so what Gracie said, well, this is what we can do. When test time come, here, you just take my paper and you actually do my English test for me and I'll do <laughs> your math test for you. And Honor looked at Gracie, but the friendship was just so strong. Gracie gave this uh look right back at Honor and Honor just knew what it meant. And so Honor said, okay. And so that's the way it went in eighth grade. Uh, Gracie, her grades in math went from Excuse me, Gracie, her grades in English went from C's to actually A's and vice versa happened with honor in math. Now they were both honor roll students in eighth grade. Oh my, you know the parents were so happy and they were so proud that finally and especially Lisa, finally Gracie brought home an honor roll, um, honor roll report card for practically the whole year, the eighth grade year. So they were set up very nicely and they were known to be smart teacher's aides and they were ready, as was said, among the teachers for high school. So keep this in mind. They had a nice summer break. They had fun times of swimming, of going on road trips together. 
They reminisced already at that age all the good times that they had from kindergarten to elementary school to middle school. Life was good. It couldn't get any better. Now honor roll grades and they're ready to go to the big time of high school. High school. When Gracie and Honor arrived at high school, ninth grade, there was no special note that followed them. No letter, no expressions of the camaraderie and friendship that they had together. On a good note, they still had what high schoolers called as homeroom, where, you know, when you first get to school, you normally, there's like a waiting period before all the classes start, but you at least have a place where you can be accounted for. And somehow the universe uh, puts them together. <laughs> and so they at least have the whole same homeroom together in ninth grade. Well, when they got their assignments, their official assignments, you can imagine Gracie looked and started telling her friend, Honor, and saying, who do you have for first period? Who do you have for second period, third and fourth and so on? And guess what? Other than homeroom, they had no classes together. Now, some people may wonder, well, look, they got on the road anyway. They're good to go, aren't they? And so there were many other subjects from uh, art that they, you know, electoral subjects, uh, sports. And you probably know by now that Gracie was pretty good in sports, too. But she just didn't really want to pursue that either because as she would say, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China, as she would say sometimes. And so... Either way, when they looked over their grades, they still knew that they could, you know, do pretty well together, even though they were being separated for the first time. Well, what happened during the first semester? Who was it that no longer struggled not only with C's, but guess what? Actually started experiencing failing grades. And who was it when it came to math? They were no longer making C's, but they started struggling with failing grades. Yes, Honor and Gracie had a wake-up call that was very, very hurtful. Honor would go home crying every night, and she would call Gracie Please help me with this math. And then Honor would say, well, can you help me first? <laughs> so that first semester, they brought home report cards where they had A's and B's in every subject, except but the subject that both of them were weak in. So that would be Honor was struggling with math, and Gracie was struggling with English literature. You can bet that Lisa was fit to be tied. And so what ended up happening is each parent sat their child down individually, and Lisa talked to Gracie about what was going on, and Honor and Olivia had their own private discussion as well. Later, the parents came together. It was Olivia and Lisa. And they were talking about it over coffee. And Lisa was sad to see that her child did not get honor roll. What happened? I don't know what happened they were doing so well 
And Olivia asked her, Well, did Gracie tell you what happened? And Lisa said, Yeah, something about that the tests were just never given out on time or something <laughs> of that nature. And Olivia said, Well, that's not the same thing that I heard from Honor. Well, what happened? Lisa wanted to know. And Olivia said, They were helping each other out a little bit too much. And so what happened, um, Olivia went on to relate the whole account of how they would do each other's tests and how they would also <laughs> do more than what they should for even the homework, etc., etc. et it went on. And Lisa was like, why didn't my daughter tell me this? And Olivia said, probably for the same reason that Honor didn't tell me until now. They both looked at each other. They want to make us proud of them. That's what the conclusion that they came to. So what happened is they both went back. And Lisa talking to Gracie and Gracie did have a flair at first. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? She would say sometimes as we mentioned before. And what Lisa told Gracie was this. I know. I know you try to be like me so much. But be yourself. If you're having difficulty with something, you can tell me. What do you like to do? And so Gracie told her, I like math. And then what Lisa said, but don't you need to be able to communicate with others in order to get that job, whether it's in astronomy or science or whatever it is that you want to get after high school? How are you going to tell persons or an employer you want to work for them or you want to do this or that for them? And Gracie was like, I never really thought about it in that way. I just thought that if they just saw my good grades in math, that they would, you know, pick me up. And then Lisa said, yes, but at the same time, when there are math problems, you got to be able to explain it also in English to others. Now, when Olivia had a conversation with Honor, she sat down with her and said, Honor, I, do you know why I named you Honor? And Honor said, no, I, I don't. And Olivia said, there's an old, old expression that goes, Oh, that person is as honest as the day is long. And it really means that not only can you depend on that person, but you know that if you talk to them, they're going to tell you the truth and give you the facts. Just like you told me what really happened with the grades. Did you know that Gracie didn't relate all the information that you told me. And Honor said, no, I didn't know that. And Olivia said, Honor, I, I, I see why you, you told me why that or what happened, but really why? Did you do it? Did you not know it was 
not a good thing for you to do to actually exchange test papers and and all those years you you both been doing so well together and you and you still are doing great but in the very fundamental areas of what you need the math and the english now you're hurting and i'm going to help you but now you are both hurting in your grades and you messed up your uh, perfect record and honor said yeah i know and it didn't really seem to bother honor that much and olivia noticed it and what honor said well gracie is my best friend and I'd rather make a few grades, a few bad grades to keep her happy rather than to make all these A's and then she falls behind. Olivia looked at Honor and said, I named you the, or gave you the right name. But now, you have to do what you need to do to get you ready for the graduation of high school. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality.